John Perillo here. This is a segment we're going to call the Ultimate Workout. We get a lot of calls on on training. You know, people always want to know how how should I train? How often should I train? How should I do this? How should I do that? Well, we're going to try to break it down so you get if you have any questions, we're going to help hopefully answer some of those questions on what you should do when you should do it. One of the first things questions we get is how often should I train? Okay, we have some scenarios here where guys will, will oh, I, you know, you should only train once a week. You should train twice a week. You should train every day. The rule of thumb here is you should try to do something every day, whether it's aerobics or, or, or weight training or some type of training. Now, if you want to take Sunday off to be with your family, that's fine. Okay, but what you don't want to do is you don't want to train real hard for a couple days, and this is where nutrition comes into it, and then have to take a couple days off just so you can recover. And this gets into how hard should I train? Well, that gets in, that, that covers a nutrition question. If you are, you, you gotta realize if your muscles are full of glycogen, you can, you can train a lot harder than if you haven't been eating right. And this gets, and the nutrition goes the same way with the overtraining factor. If you're not eating enough and you're training real hard, chances are you're going to tear yourself down. So the better your nutrition is, the harder and longer you can train and the more you can get out of your workouts because the more muscle you're tearing then your body will build back. When you Realize when you're training, you're breaking your muscle down and then you have to build it back. Now, so that means how long should I train? Well, if your nutrition is really good and you've got a lot of glycogen stores, you can train for quite a long time and get a really good workout in. If your nutrition is lacking, if you've got a lot of stress in your life, you might only be able to go into the gym, do a few heavy sets, and it's probably best to go home and then try to eat something. So your nutrition has a big role in how, how long and how hard you should train. The rule of thumb here is in, unless you're getting ready for a contest, you train till you lose your pump or just slightly past that. If you're getting ready for a contest, you train you train till you lose your pump about two thirds or three quarters of the way through your workout. Now there's a real fine line here between training to get lean and overtraining. Training to get lean, realize when you're leaning out, you're giving up stored energy so your body can, you know, so your body can repair and recover. Okay, now overtraining is when you're actually not just giving up stored energy, you're, you're getting in so little nutrients or you're training so hard for the nutrients you're getting in that you're actually losing muscle mass. So how do you make sure you're training to get lean and not overtraining and losing muscle? Well, you get the Perillo Body Stack Kit, you chart your body, and then we use that with the nutrition program and make sure that you're losing fat and not lean mass and you learn to adjust your calories and your protein and your carbs, especially your protein to carb ratio, so you're losing all all fat and not muscle. If you're losing muscle, well, you got to eat some more. Now, not so the, the scenario out there is everybody eats the same and then say, well, if I do too much aerobics, I, you know, I get weak and I, I'm overtraining because I lose muscle. That's because you're not eating enough. The aerobics burn fat and you'll get leaner, but you got to eat to compensate. So actually, the more aerobics you do, the the, the leaner you'll be, but you got to make sure you don't lose lean mass. And to do that. You use the body stack kit, you chart your body once a week, and you figure out, you adjust your diet accordingly. And then another another question we get is, well, where should I train? You know, what's the best, what's the best gym? Where's the best gym for me? Is well, rule of thumb here is I know guys that will drive sometimes an hour to get to a gym just to train where they want to train, especially the fighters and the big power lifters. They'll go up to the power station gym where they got like 30 guys bench 600 pounds. Yeah, okay. If you're one of those guys, you might want to you, know, you might want to drive an hour to get to the gym and train there three, four, five times a week. But if you're like most people, you want it to be convenient. You, you might not be the ideal gym for you, but the idea, it's, it's better to train than not to train. So you pick something usually on your way to or from work, you're going to, a gym you're going to stop at, everybody's going to be training, so you're going to train there. So, you know, the, the convenience thing for most people is one of the is most important thing. Unless you're really into something and then, then you're going to, like I say, I, I, I've actually known guys that have driven four times a week, two hours each way to work out. And, I mean, we used to drive three and a half hours 
up to Cleveland every Saturday just to, you know, just to, just to squat with John Black's crew at, at Black's gym. So there's times when you want to do that. But for most people, just convenience is the most important thing. Pick a place where you can, where it's very convenient that you get a good workout when you go there. Okay, another thing is when's the best time to train? Well, the best time is whenever you can get a good workout. If you're the guy who likes to train in the morning, then train before work. If you're a guy, some people will grab a quick workout on, you know, at their at lunch hour. Some people like to train in the evening. The best time to do aerobics is first thing in the morning or last thing at night after your last meal to set yourself up for, for your morning aerobics so your glycogen stores are low so you burn more fat. But the best time to train is when you're going to get a good workout when it feels comfortable for you. And then another thing we get is how should I rotate my body parts? What, what's the best way? Should I work them once a week? Should I work, you know, body parts every two days, every three days, every four days? The rule of thumb here is you work them, you rotate your whole body every three, four, or five days, and then you start over. And you got to realize here sometimes if there if there was one just ultimate training schedule like you work your body once a week, then everybody be doing it and everybody be getting max results. Where we see the people that get the best results are, we can take an example of competitive bodybuilders. They will actually, they'll, they'll go through a phase of overtraining or, or, or almost there where they're losing all their, giving up stored energy, burning off all their body fat, really watching their nutrients. And what that does is that but they're doing a whole lot of aerobics. They're opening up insulin receptor sites. They're adding mitochondria to the fast twitch muscle fibers. They're, um, they're increasing their capillary density. And then after the contest, they go back, they cut out some of the aerobics and they start eating more. And they through, go through a growing spurt like you can't believe. They'll put on sometimes, oh, I've seen people put on three and four pounds of muscle a week for a couple months after a contest. Um, so sometimes you've got to push yourself and overtrain or really push it so you can back off and gain. So you got to, it's a, it's a whole dynamic thing. What you want to do is you always want to try to push yourself in every workout, whether it be aerobics or weight training, pick something and try to push it, whether it be in heavier reps or maybe do a rep set that you haven't done before. And then, uh, you know, try to really get in there and push yourself. So when you're, when you're in the gym, go for it. So, so. Now, make sure that you, uh, here, here again, make sure the workouts tear you down you, and the, the, your nutrition and your rest between workouts is what builds you back and makes you stronger and makes you better. So make sure your nutrition matches your training or then you overtrain. And this is, this is what a lot of these people have come lately in the last, oh, maybe five to 10 years is the big thing is about overtraining. Well, if you keep your nutrition the same, it's easy to overtrain if you push yourself. But if you really want to get good, you push yourself and you match your nutrition, and then you get that much better. Be sure to visit us at uh, www.carillo.com, and uh, we have oh, a whole bunch of information on there, all kinds of technical stuff. Come and visit us on the web. I hope this can be of help.